I am genuinely excited to unbox this very unusual bike. Let's do it. It's packed really well. It actually looks like, well, the wheels are stone flat for one, but we'll sort that out. A premium feel already. Let's keep going. Okay, so basically this is what you get out of the box. They say it's best to lay it on the styrofoam here while you fit the back wheel. When you are fitting the wheel, the side that is not painted goes flat down. So we'll just turn this around. You get all the tools you need, all the screws, everything else. All of the screws as well have Loctite, which is very good to see. So here it is outside. Let's have a quick look at it before we take it out on a spin. It's probably the most minimalistic design I've ever seen in my life. The bell is a little bit... It's okay, like it'll do the job, but I definitely think something louder would be a bit more cooler. Actually, quite impressive considering that hill is a little bit steep and the dry shaft had no clicking. I felt like everything was built really well and they're going up that hill testing it. Well, this bike is equipped with actually two sensors, a torque sensor and a speed sensor. When you are riding less than 16 kilometers an hour, the torque sensor system does domain the whole actual pedaling experience. The torque sensor measures how hard the rider is pedaling to determine how much electric power to push to the bike. The harder you pedal, the more power it basically gives to the motor. If you pedal lighter, less power it gives. It basically makes the adjustment in real time, which is brilliant. And the higher the pedal assist level, the more power the rider can be assisted. Now actually when you are going uphill with this and you do put the bike onto level 5 it is really good, it does push you up and you can feel it there helping you along. And I do want to talk briefly about the IP65 rating. I did talk to the manufacturer, they did say that the bike is okay to be used in light rain which is good and of course if you do happen to get caught in rain as soon as you get home do dry the bike out immediately and do not charge it for a couple of hours just from a safety standpoint so let's try and test it out here let's see if we can get 30 degrees and the motor should cut, cut out oh, oh, oh the motor did actually cut out there you also have a rear tail light on this you have a front light which are okay the rear tail light's quite good the front light i think an additional front light on this would be very good you also have your battery compartment here if you pop your key in there it comes out and you can charge it bring it to your desk and charge it very easily and then you can just secure it as well by putting this back up 
a snaps back up and you can also actually use this stand when you do fold the bike it can rest on that stand so it doesn't tip to one side which is very good the latching mechanism itself it's actually, it's hard to, for this to come across on camera. The actual frame of the bike is very chunky. The back mud guard is decent enough. The only thing is over time, it does have a bit of a wobble there. I think it could do a bit more stabilization. I would be afraid of that actually snapping over time. And this is where the drive shaft system is. It's built in here, it's a completely sealed unit. They do say it can last up to 40,000 kilometers maintenance free. In theory, you should get really a long time out of this bike, years and years, and you shouldn't really have to worry. You have your five gears, you have the percentage of the battery, you also have the speed you're going and the distance you've traveled so far. Let's go fast as possible, see if we can grip the hill. Come on, come on. <laughs> yes. It did assist me there very well. So what would be my final verdict on this bike? Let's run through the specs. It does only have a 25 km hour top speed. So it's perfect really more for commuting around the city, that type of thing. You wouldn't be taking this on group rides by any means. And you, of course you wouldn't be taking it off road. It does weigh 20 kilos very easily. It's extremely lightweight to be honest. 20 kilos is nothing for most people. That kickstand is extremely sturdy. It's probably the best I've seen on an electric bike. The frame is really rock solid on this. It's not cheaply made. You have that battery that you can take out, that you can charge right beside you at your desk, on your home, beside your beds, which means you don't have to bring this inside to stick that on charge. It does have only the mechanical disc brakes, but they do do the job. Over time, of course, they will need adjusting on that. The saddle itself is quite decent. Hill assist is not too bad. The torque is very good going up a hill. You have more than enough power to go up a 10, 15, maybe even a 20 degree hill with this bike because of that torque sensor. The gyro sensor that is actually built into it. Let's say you turn it too much and the bike goes past a 30 degree angle, the motor actually cuts out on this, which is a really good safety feature to have. So you can come to a stop. It has those collapsible pedals also. All in all, I would give the, this bike a really good score of a 3.5 out of 5. The, um, deducted marks because, of course, I personally would like a bit more speed. I would like a bit of a bigger motor and I would like the back mudguard to be definitely a little bit more stable. That's why I'm only deducting, but everything else, I absolutely have no complaints about this bike whatsoever it is linked below if you want to go and have a look at the current prices it's only just launched as well and again remember you don't have no grease rubbing off your trousers which is extremely annoying in the meantime if you have enjoyed this video give it a like subscribe if you're still here and i'll talk to you in the next video